Hey crafty friends, this is Chelsea. Welcome to today's video. If you are anything like me, you have a substantial stamp collection. There's so many beautiful ones and I just keep collecting them. So it's a major goal of mine to make sure I am actually using them on my projects. In today's video, I'm going to share a bunch of tips with you of how I work those into my process so that I make sure I'm getting good use out of my stamps. I'm going to be using this one today. This is the February stamp of the month. It's beautiful. It has coordinating thin cuts, which you can choose to add if you want to. And I'm going to be scrapping these really cute photos of my daughter. This is from a couple years ago. I love looking back at those older photos. If you're looking for more inspiration with the stamp of the month, my friend Julie is posting a video later this week, and I will link her video down in the description once it's posted. I'm going to be using these Colorista colored pencils and the new 12 by 12 creative design team sketchbook. This is the first 12 by 12 one that we've put out. There's 42 layouts, so 21 double pages. All the measurements are in there and the black and white sketches. So you can really adapt them to whatever layout or theme you want. I will have that link down in the description as well. I'm going to be using some of the mix in papers, lots of like subtle patterns, which I think will work perfectly with my photos today. And some pink and green is kind of what I'm thinking to pull in. So here is the sketch that I'm planning to use. You can see there are two pages that could go together, but I am just going to use the one on the right. You can definitely use these alone or together. It's very flexible that way. The sketchbook is a digital file, so you can choose to just print it out, look at it on your device, or even send it to the printers and get it bound. I'm gonna start out by just placing my photos where they're gonna go according to the sketch and figuring out which direction I want everything facing. Usually try and have the subject in the photo facing in towards the layout. And then it's time to choose pattern paper. I love that the mix-ins have the same color on both sides, but just different patterns. I went for the busier side here because there's not a ton of pattern on this layout. And then I chose the pink because the other side of this is a very thin stripe. I wanted a little bit bolder pink. So I chose to go with the plaid on this and then I'm using a zip strip to add a third pattern onto this layout. Now my journaling, I actually did in the Project Life app. This was one of their journaling cards that said right now, and then I just put text boxes above and below and just kind of made it wrap around the words. So all my journaling is already done and I'm gonna put it down there. It's supposed to be up higher on the sketch, but that's a good thing about sketches. You can move things around and make it suit either like your style or make it just suit your needs for the pieces that you have to work with. I'm bringing in this bright lemonade color. I'm using the softer side, the lighter side of the double-sided cardstock. Because there was some yellow in her shirt, you can't really tell, I don't think on camera, but there are some little yellow images in there and I needed another color. So I decided to go with yellow and I thought it would bring some nice bright happiness here. This title is Cut on the Cricket and I'm going to do like a two-part title. So the smiles I did on the Cricut so I could weld the letters together and then I'm using this simple serif uppercase die set to cut the word big. So big smiles is gonna be my title. I kind of, because I didn't follow the sketch completely, ended up with this big chunk in the middle. So I figured the best thing to do was to add a nice big bold title. Now, this is where the stamps are gonna come in. I'm going to use these as my embellishments. There's lots of ways to use stamps and I have uh, several videos of me using stamping on layouts with different tips of different ways to use stamps and I will make sure to link that at the end of this video for you but I'm going to use them as embellishments today which is like the easiest way to use stamps on your projects. One of my biggest tips for using more stamps on your pages is to start from the beginning. When you're picking your paper and your embellishments that's when you should pick your stamps that either coordinate with the paper or go with the theme of your layout so that it's kind of in the beginning stages, in that planning process of what you want to use and that way you don't forget to reach for your stamps. You may have heard me say before, I used to primarily use my stamps on cards and I didn't even realize I wasn't using them on my layouts until someone asked me for 
ideas for using stamps on pages or if I had videos of that and I realized I almost never reached for my stamps. So that is when I changed my process to begin the process starting with my paper and my stamps. So if you're a big sticker user or you use a lot of die cuts, in that step where you would be reaching for those things, think about pulling a stamp set or two that coordinates with your page and bringing them in at that step in your creative process. I'm going back and forth here trying to decide how I want this title to sit, if it looks better stacked on top or more stretched out like this. I think I'm gonna leave it stretched out like this and have a little bit more of that pink paper showing and to fill up a little bit more of that long empty space. Now I have everything kind of placed where I think I want it. I have my triangle of embellishments, the three different points of embellishments. I have my journaling. Now it's time to do a little bit of coloring. Colored pencils are really beginner friendly, I think. There's lots of different ways you can color with them and they're also really good for detailed little areas. Some of the leaves on these images are quite fine and I think the pencils are going to be easier for me to use than let's say a marker. So I'm going to pull out colors that will kind of go with this. I have some ballerina, lemonade, my title is in jade, as well as that green pattern paper is jade as well. So I'm gonna kind of be looking for shades that match that, as well as the blue that's in the cup that my daughter's holding. So I have sunburst yellow, which actually matches the lemonade color pretty closely. And then that kind of tealish blue color, I pulled this wave blue. And then I wanted a darker shade of blue, so I'm going to grab the blue teal. And that will be a nice complement to that lighter blue. Lots of times I like to have two shades, but sometimes in sets like this, there's just not enough colors to have two. And then I'm grabbing the deep ruby just in case I wanna add a little bit more pink. It's not like a really good match or anything for the ballerina, but I thought, hey, just in case I wanna add more pink, I can. And then of course, I'm gonna need some green because I have the leaves. I have lots of choices in the green department, but I'm going to go with woodland green and nettle green. So one is a little bit darker than the other, but they're both kind of the same yellow green tones. And I think they should match the jade color pretty well. One of the key things to success with colored pencils is to sharpen your pencils. You can see these guys are pretty dull, so I took a little break and I sharpened all my pencils. They will be ready to go and get in all those nice little tiny areas. Now, as you're coloring, you're probably going to need to resharpen as you go, depending on how long you're coloring for. But I am just gonna show you the first couple of flowers here and then I'll color the rest off camera. I'm starting off here with the blue teal. Now, one thing I like to do when I'm coloring flowers is I actually Google them and see what I can find for different color combinations, patterns, that kind of things. And I think these are pansies, and so I just Googled pansies, and they kind of have these dark areas in the center and then kind of different patterns, and some of them have like little white gaps. So what I decided to do is put the darker blue in the center, kind of following those lines and make it uneven on purpose. And then I'm gonna leave a little white gap around the edge of that and take the lighter blue color and very lightly fill it in around the edge of the petals. So I'm not really blending per se, I'm kind of more coloring in a pattern. So you can definitely blend with these. You can layer colors over each other. But for this step, I'm kind of more just creating a pattern. If you are not a fan of coloring, you can still use stamps. So I could have left these just black and white if I wanted to. That can look really classy. You can also just stamp onto a colored cardstock. You could even stamp and heat emboss maybe in white or black or something onto colored cardstock. And that can be a really classy look as well. If you do wanna try coloring in stamps, I think the key is to find the medium that you really like. So you might have tried coloring in, but maybe you were using markers and you really didn't like them, or maybe you tried pencils and you didn't like them and markers would be more your thing. I think it's just playing around and finding out what works for you. I have a couple of friends who like swore they would never be colors, they did not wanna get into coloring, till they tried the tri-blend markers from Spectrum Noir and then they're like, this is awesome, it's so easy, and now they color, I would say, regularly. So I think it's just a matter of finding the medium that you like. 
Now another tip for you, if you want to use more stamps, maybe you forget. You forget about those beautiful stamps that you bought. Well, if you're buying ones either for a specific project or that go with a collection that you have, I think it's a good idea to keep them with that collection. Kind of like how you would buy embellishments that coordinate with a collection and you keep it all together until you use it. You can do that with your stamps too. Pop them in the bag or in the paper pack and then they're all together and when you go to craft with it, you won't forget about them. Here are our finished flowers. Those are ready to go on the layout. I colored the rest off camera, all my extra leaves and everything. And the clusters of flowers are on foam tape. So I am popping those up. And then like this one here, I'm just gonna set it there. I'm not pushing down on the foam tape. I'm going to go ahead and put some glue on my extra leaves, tuck them underneath. And once I'm happy with everything where it is, then I will push it down and kind of make that permanent. Often when I'm crafting, I go for the path of least resistance. So unless I have something very specific in mind, I'm going to reach for the thing that is closest and easiest to grab and quickest to do because I got other things I got to do, right? So if you want to do more stamping, I recommend having your inks really handy, easy to access, your stamp cleaner or chamois or whatever you use for that to be on your work surface so that you don't forget about it. And if you struggle with getting good impressions on your stamps, getting a stamping platform can be a game changer. It helps you be able to restamp an image, maybe the first time you don't get a really good impression. Well, you can restamp it as many times as you want in the exact same spot without having to try and line it up. A stamp platform can be a real game changer and take away some of that frustration. Now, I wanted to add some bows. So I pulled out this Christmas set actually, and I am going to glue these little glitter bows. I cut it out of a retired glitter paper. It's called Bashful, very similar to Ballerina. So it's a light pink. And I thought it would just look so pretty around those little clusters of flowers. I felt like they needed something. And then this top one, I was trying to figure out where to put it because, you know, you have something in each of those spots. I wanted each little cluster to have a bow. I decided to tuck it underneath that leaf and I think it looks pretty good there. I love how the bright colors on these flowers are really just bringing some life and some spring to this page because these pictures are from spring. This was just one day out walking on the way to the park and my journaling is basically just about that and how she was teething and she was such a good teether that sometimes we didn't even know she had teeth coming in. She was super calm. I'm really happy with how this is coming together but I feel like there needs to be a little bit more of that jade green up in this top corner here because we have some in the pattern paper down below. We have that big bold title and I felt like it just needed something. So I'm going in with my paper crafting tool and lifting up the adhesive because I did not leave room for this. So I had to do a little surgery. This tab is from a retired die set called Tabs. And I use that set quite a bit. I'm just going to tape it shut because I don't need to actually use it like a tab. And then I have this fun stamp set called Remember This Moment. And it has so many good phrases for scrapbook layouts. I really like this captured memories. A lot of these you could use for so many different types of layouts and I think I'll be using this stamp set quite a bit. It's nice to have some stamp sets like this that you can just use repeatedly on different layouts. I'm like that with like some splatter stamps as well and you can even have a little basket or container on your work surface with those kind of stamps that you could reach for for all kinds of layouts and that way they're nice and handy and you don't forget about them. One of my favorite ways to accent a cluster of embellishments, whether that's a cluster of stamped images or die cuts or whatever, is to add some bling. So I'm using the sparkles and the bitty sparkles. I love mixing these two. I definitely think you should have both sizes. And I know the bitty sparkles are little, but they're just the perfect thing. When I am scattering these beside my clusters, I like to make little triangles. So not always, but often I will put the larger rhinestone right next to the cluster and then I will have a couple of the bitty ones kind of scattered out in a rough triangle shape kind of going away from the cluster. That's not a hard and fast rule or anything, but I have noticed I do that quite a bit. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this stamp is only available for February 2024. So the stamp of months, you really got to jump on them while they're live. You can get it for free or discounted. 
I will put that information down in the description box if you want to go down there and check it out. I love how this page turned out so bright and happy. Now, could I have accomplished this by using stickers or die cuts or something? Yes, I could have, but I could also now take this same stamp and use it over and over again to create a background or to do lots of other fun things that you can do with stamps and different techniques and using different mediums. If you want some more ideas of how you can use your stamps in unique ways, then click on this playlist right here and you can go check out some of those videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.